So You Can Play That Game is proudly sponsored by NiceGameShop.com, the place to go for rare and unusual Asian games. Hi, I'm Michael. Take a seat and I'll teach you how to play Isle of Sky from Chieftain to King. In this game, you are taking on the role of a chieftain of a clan, as are your other players, but you all want to become the king, and only the chieftain who manages to develop his territory the best and be the most prosperous will become the king. The way you're going to do this is through tile laying and also through a form of trading that almost feels a bit like bidding. These square tiles are called the landscape tiles. To set up the game, you'll want to start by separating out the castle landscape tiles, which have a different back to the rest of the tiles. Having done this, take all the ordinary landscape tiles and place them in the cloth bag and mix them all up. The castle tiles you'll give to each of the players and they'll pick a colour of castle. Any not used, just return to the box. As well as the castle tile, each player will also need the matching coloured player screen, score token and a discard token. The player screen also acts as a player aid and lists the different phases of play on. You can assemble this by just slotting it together as so. Each player's score token will then be placed on the zero space of the main game board which you'll set out in the middle of the table. The side of the board you're using will depend on the number of players and you can see which one you should be using by this little number here in the bottom left corner. Next, place the round marker on the first round space, which are these little kind of discs along here. Then shuffle up the door back scoring tiles and draw four and lay them under the A, B, C and D spaces. For your first game, it's recommended that you use the tiles that are shown here. Finally, place all the coins within easy reach of all the players and give the youngest player your first player marker and you're ready to begin. So for a two player game your table will look something like this when all set up. The aim of the game is to get the most points and the main way that you're going to get points in this game is at the end of each round in the end of round scoring and at this point different score tiles will score for different rounds as shown at the bottom of the round marker. I'll explain in more detail later the conditions for each of these starting scoring tiles, but you will also get points at the end of the game. If you have money left, every five money will be worth one point. And also, if you have got landscape tiles in your territory that have a scroll symbol, such as this tile here on, then those score at the end of the game. There are several different ones of these and they're fairly explanatory for how many points you get for meeting what conditions. However, it's important to note that if the scroll is in an enclosed territory, meaning that, say, this one is in water, if that water was completely surrounded by land and closed in, then it would score double the points it normally would. At the end of the game, you'll total up the points and whoever has the most wins. The game is broken down into six rounds and each round is made up of six phases. Your player screen lists each of the different phases. The first phase is income where you'll collect money dependent on the income that is stated on your landscape tiles. The second phase is to draw tiles and set prices. In the third phase everyone discards the tile that they selected to be discarded in phase two. Then in phase four, we go around the table in turn, allowing each person to buy one tile if they can afford any. In phase five, players then build their territories by placing their tiles adjacent to their existing territory tiles. And finally, phase six is the end of round and end scoring. When collecting income, players will look at the tiles in their territories to determine how much income they get. At the start of the game, everyone will get five coins as shown on their castle. However, as the game progresses, you will add more tiles to your territory and this will affect your income. The income you'll get will be determined by the sum of all the coins in your territory but they must connect to your castle by road. So in this case here, this coin over here with the barrels is not connected to the castle, so it does not count. So this player would get five, six, 
seven. As well as the income from your territory, you can also gain income for your player position in the later rounds, starting with round three. The amount that you receive is equal to the number shown above the round marker times the number of players who are ahead of you. So in round three, the green player would get bonus two coins because two players are ahead. If it was round four, they would get a bonus four coins because it's two per player. And you can see it increases as the game progresses. The blue player only has one in front, so would only get the value that is shown. And the red player gets no extra income compared to what is shown in their territory. In phase two, each player in turn will draw three tiles out of the cloth bag and put them in a line in front of their player screen. They then need to set the prices and select a tile to be discarded. They'll do this behind their screen, so the players can see what tiles will be available, but they don't know what you're going to be doing. So you will be factoring in leaving money in order to buy in the next round, but you must set a price of at least one coin on each of the tiles that is in play other than the one you choose to discard. So in this case, I am going to choose to discard this one here. And we've got a price set of one apiece. What I'm actually going to do is go two apiece, and then I hold one in my hand, which is my money to buy. Once everyone has indicated they're ready, all players then reveal their selections by moving their screen out of the way. Phase three then means that you remove all the tiles that have a discard token pointing at them and place them back in the cloth bag. Phase four is the buy a tile phase and starting with your first player you'll go around clockwise with each player having the opportunity to buy a single tile with any money that they have left over that they didn't put to set a price on their tiles that were in front of them. So in this case here I had one left over and I am first player so I could buy another player's tile that costs one. I don't have to buy a tile, it is a choice. However, I am going to choose to buy a tile and I want to buy this tile here off of the other player, which costs one because that's how much they set the price as. So I give them the one coin and I take the tile in front of me. It would then go to their turn. They now have the money from the tile I bought plus the money that they have left over. So they have four money, but that would mean they could afford both my tiles, but they can only buy one. So they'll pay two money in order to buy this tile here. So I then have that money in my reserve. Once you've gone round the table giving everyone an opportunity to buy, it is then the end of this phase and you move on to the build phase. Any money that you assign to tiles that were not bought gets returned to the supply, you do not get to keep it. In the build phase, players will simultaneously place the tiles that they have bought and that were not bought and remained in front of them into their territory. The order they place these tiles is up to the players and they can move them around as much as they want. However, in future rounds, once they place them, they'll not be able to move them again. So the rules for placing these is terrain type has to match. So you have to have water to water, meadow to meadow, mountain to mountain, for example. However, you don't have to continue roads. So in a situation like this, this is a legal placement because there is a road there, but it is meadow. The road is irrelevant. However, you want to continue roads if you want to connect up coins. So for connecting this coin here, we'd place this meadow here. And then as I say, those are now fixed. So in a later round, when I get this tile here, I can't split these up to insert this in there and make it a larger mountain space. And as these are the only mountains I have, I would not be able to connect on the mountain side, but I could place the meadow like that. But I wouldn't be able to go down here because that would leave mountain touching water, which would not be legal. So we'll say we'll put this here so we've got water touching water. The final phase of each round is the end of round scoring. And each round, different scoring tiles will actually score.
So in your first round, you can see that the only tile that's going to score is A, the second round B, third round A and C, and so on. So for your first game, if you're using the recommended setup, the way these will score is first we have this one under A, you'll get one victory point for each sheep or cattle on one of your tiles that is either diagonally or orthogonally adjacent to a farm in your clan's territory. For rounds with B, the person with the most ships will score five points and the person with the second most ships will score two points. Then rounds that include the C, you'll score two points for each square of four tiles and each tile can be part of more than one square. And finally, for rounds that include D, you'll score three victory points for each enclosed completed terrain type that is comprised of at least three tiles. Once you're done with the scoring, you then pass the first player marker clockwise to the next player and move your round marker on. Once you've finished phase six of the sixth round, it is then the end of the game and you will do your end of game scoring which is shown by this section here where you will score points for your scrolls which are doubled if the scroll is in an enclosed region for example with this blue player here they have scrolls for these round buildings and they have one round building in their territory this scroll here is in this water region that has not been enclosed so we'll just score one point for the one round building they have. The other scroll however is in this mountain that has been completely enclosed and therefore will score double points so would be two points giving the player three points. And for every five coins you have you'll get one point. Whoever has the most points wins the game. And that is how you play Isle of Sky from Chieftain to King by Mayfair Games. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel. It's worth subscribing and sharing. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.